These pictures are the first and so far only pictorial evidence of the bloody clashes here which witnesses said left at least 200 dead and 1,800 injured. Violence the provincial government here will not publicly admit even happened. Mayhem photographed bravely by a frightened student who wanted the world to know. The film smuggled out. The student and others who were there said police and troops brutally clubbed, beat, even stabbed demonstrators in two days of running battles. Now in Changdao, all is calm beneath the overpowering statue of Mao Zedong. Like dirt under a carpet, the authorities have swept evidence of the students' fury behind the statue, where apparently they hope it will not be noticed. Burnt out government cars and minibuses, military motorcycles, a fire truck, a dozen or more trolley buses, rusting reminders of a call for freedom. And Mao's municipal gardens a mess, trampled into a plough field by the feet of fleeing protesters. New potted palms now being planted. Armed soldiers guard City Hall and patrol the streets. Surprisingly, as ostensible tourists, we got to meet briefly the 11th ranking high official here, the general secretary to the mayor. Too busy to talk about the troubles though. Just down the road, a burnt out dance hall. The sign outside blamed lawless elements for the damage. And across the street, real devastation, a whole block gutted. A police station, the Sunshine Glasses factory, the Jade Palm restaurant, and the big people's department store. Staff picking over the debris, no opinions offered. Unlike in Tiananmen Square, this demonstration turned into a riot. But just like Beijing, the authorities reacted with brute force. In this far-flung province, as in others we've been to this week, the army have swept the protest movement off the streets and put many of the protesters in prison. There's no doubt they've broken the backbone of this movement, but the desire for democracy, we're assured, lingers on. At the universities, most students are boycotting lectures. Many, fearing arrest, have fled. Those remaining will not express their views. Well, a few minutes after those pictures were taken, we were arrested and driven into the city to the headquarters of the Bureau for Internal Security. We were questioned for five hours, but then released. They have, though, kept our passports pending what they call further investigation. Well, we, we had a spot of bother at the university yesterday, just after those scenes that you saw. We were apprehended and taken to a room and questioned for half an hour or so, then taken off to the Bureau of Internal Security, where we were interrogated for something like four or five hours. They've now taken our passports, that's uh, the passports of myself and John Elfin, so the cameraman. Um, they had them for something like 28 hours now, and they won't give them back. They say we have to stay in our hotel to await our punishment, after which we will be given our passports, and they say it's best we would then leave China. They've, they've told you you're awaiting your punishment. Have they given you any indication of what that might be? Uh, no, they haven't. We, we went there today and pressed them uh, about what uh, was likely to happen. Um, I think the most likely thing is some sort of fine, and then we'll probably have to make some sort of confession um, of the awful things we've done. Uh... <laughs> 在北京市公安局通缉的北京电影学院叶大去坐班学生马绍芳六月十四号在广州投案自首。据马绍芳本人交代，六月五日他逃离北京，繁荣和稳定出发，认真执行联合声明的规定，遵守中英双方关于联合
。这两名英国旅游者威尔伦·阿尔伯特曼和约翰·威廉姆·艾尔劳斯顿是六月十二日抵达成都的。六月十三日，这两名英国人雇佣成都和平国际旅行社试用人员何昌宇做导游，先到被打砸抢烧了的成都月季皇后酒家进行采访活动，随后又到成都市人民政府要求政府官员接见和介绍情况。遭到拒绝后，又到被打砸抢烧后的成都人民商场废墟进行采访活动。中午十二点过，又乘出租汽车到四川大学进行录音录像的采访活动。正在川大第六学生宿舍进行采访活动时，被川大工作人员发现后，立即制止了他们的采访活动。另外，何昌宇冒充成都市人民政府外事办公室工作人员，对外有协和国际旅行。社工作人员引导两名英国旅游者从事与其身份不相符合的活动，违反了我国刑法第一百六十六条，目前已被公安机关拘留审查。这是四川台记者报道的。昨天下午，国务院发言人袁木接受了美国全国广播公司记者布罗考的采访，回答了他提出的问题。